Hi, and welcome to your first day to coding, brought to you by Cupertino High School Robotics. Today, we'll be learning about, you know, everything you need to know about programming basics and what it really takes to be a programmer. Computers are very interesting things. They are a very advanced piece of technology, yet they're so basic on the inside. You can see that, you know, computers are really advanced and fast, yet if you were to tell a computer to do something, you'd have to explain every single step because computers do not have brains, therefore they cannot think for themselves. You have to tell them every single step. If I told this computer to control a robot that would clean up this room for me, I'd have to tell it what the bottle is, how to find it, where to put it. That's just for the bottle. And then I'd have to do that for every single thing in this room. Plus, I'd also have to kind of define what the room is. And Oh, God. But, you know, it, it is definitely, it can get very complicated because you you have to tell it every single thing, right? But it's not impossible. And with the proper etiquette, you can make it work. So, as I said, programming is an etiquette. The true job of a programmer isn't just to put together a bunch of mumbo-jumbo text and expect it to work, it's to actually think about a chain of reasoning. When you bake a cake, you think about the ingredients you're going to be putting inside first. Am I going to be using skim milk? 2%? I don't know which milk I'll be using. Am I going to be using brown sugar? Regular sugar? These are things you know you think about before making baking a cake. Similar thing goes for programming. When you're writing a program, you want to think about what do I want the computer to be doing for each and every step of the process. You need to think about these things before you go and really put your thoughts into code. Coding, again, you know, it's only one part of it. It's not the major part. So people that don't know the syntax, that's fine. But if you don't know how to think and plan, that's a huge problem. Now, syntax is the vocabulary of a language. You know, someone who knows the syntax has a good knowledge, good grasp of the keywords and their various uses for that language. You know, they know how to put their thoughts onto paper, for say. For example, here, we have the thought that, hmm, let me make the computer do something. So they use syntax to make the computer do something. I'm not saying this is a legit line from a language, I'm just saying that, you know, it's code and that's what syntax is, turning the thought into code and that code is your syntax. I want to make the computer give us a value, a certain value, so it would return the value to me, you know? This is syntax, it's turning what I want into what I get. Programs are heavily reliant on variables. So, you know, variables similar to math, you can assign any value to a variable and change it at any time in a program. You can change it at any time. So here I'm going to write a sample program, just planning out a sample program that just adds any two numbers together and returns the value. So what I would do is I would create a variable for the first number, another for the second number, and a third for the sum of the first number two numbers. Then I'd return the third value. I could also just return the sum of the first two numbers, but you get the idea. You need to have a variable of some sort to store the value in. This is why variables are so key, because computers are always working with data, and data needs to be stored somewhere, and those, those things are stored in variables. Programs also consist of something known as control structures. We can categorize these into two different groups. There are conditional statements. So what conditional statements do is only make something occur if a certain condition is true or false. So suppose my robot has a color sensor and out on the field we have apples and oranges. Well, my color sensor would detect the apples to be would be red so I would say if the object is red then it's an apple so please call it an apple or pick it up 
that's a conditional. Loops, on the other hand, make something occur over and over and over again. So maybe I could say, you know, run a servo for 30 seconds. That's a loop. It loops around and makes sure the servo does the same thing over and over again for 30 seconds. Without control structures, your program's basically nothing. It's basically this. And if you want to spend your entire life writing calculator apps, well, that's good for you, but... Most of us want to do something more useful with our programming knowledge, and that's what control structures enable us to do. Programs also consist of methods. These three terms are interchangeable and are technically correct when used with each other. Subroutines, voids, and functions. What these are are a set of instructions wrapped under one command. I w if I wanted to tell a robot to clean your room, then the robot would make its bed, put away its belongings, and vacuum the floor, and I'd have to tell it how to do those things. But if I wanted it to clean its room a thousand times, I don't have to tell it to make its bed a thousand times, put away its belongings a thousand times, and vacuum the floor a thousand times. I can just do that once, and then just tell it to clean its room a thousand times using a loop connections yeah in all seriousness uh these are very important these basically make your program a lot shorter than really it needs to be wait no just kidding it makes the program a lot shorter and efficient to run comments are something that are very very useful when writing code because these help you plan out and make edits without actually changing the code similar to Google Docs you know you make a comment about something it's there but it won't really affect the final product you won't see the product you won't see the comments in the final product and you know they're only for producer eyes there's syntax for them so here I'm making up something return true then I'm adding two slashes, and everything after that is a comment. This is syntax for most languages, so keep in mind that I'm talking about, you know, some of the big languages like Java, JavaScript, so on and so forth, but some languages may have their own syntax for comments, so you might want to keep that in mind. This is the syntax for Java, which is what this series will be focusing on. So, as you can see, everything after these two slashes is a comment. But it'll only be a comment on this line. So if I were to type something, as you can see here, I type something else. This is no longer a comment because this is a new line. In order to have a multilinear comment, you would use a slash, a star, a star, and a slash. And everything in between is a comment, which is pretty cool. So coding is a process, just like, you know, writing is a process. You plan it out first, you write, you edit, you compile you run. So I'm going to be explaining these things. So the planning of the code, the pseudocode, usually done through comments. So as you can see back here, this is kind of like pseudocode. I kind of created like an outline for myself. And a red, if, if this were a real program, I would probably put this in the comments of my program. Comments can be anywhere on a program. You just you can literally fill your entire program with comments wherever you want, but I would definitely have one section of comments just dedicated to my pseudocode because that has my plan, that has my steps. Then I write code for each one of those steps because I have a good knowledge of the syntax. You see, I use my knowledge of the syntax to turn my thought into my words, into the computer language. Then I compile. So the way programs work is, think of it as a translator. If someone's speaking to me in Japanese, which I'm not acquainted with, uh, I would not understand what that person's trying to tell me. So I would need a translator to tell me in what they're trying to say so I can respond accordingly. Similarly, a compiler takes your code, converts it into an executable version that your computer will get. So, you know, it's translating your code into the computer's version, and then it's going to run it. In the compiling process, it's also going to return any errors. So suppose 
you made a mistake in your code, it'll return your errors during this step of the process. Then, of course, if everything is all good, your code is in check, it'll execute. But remember, computers are dumb, so if you forgot to include a step, but all your other steps were correct, it won't run the step you're missing, obviously, you know, because you didn't specify it. Now, where to write code? So, computers have notepads installed, you know, default notepads. Mac OS has one, Windows has one. You can definitely download some. These are useful for storing information and saving them as various files, but it depends. You see, some program languages don't require actual compiling by the programmer. You can just run them in, like, suppose a web browser if it's a website, and you can see it automatically compiles. In those cases, you would use, like, a notepad or something like that. Uh, but then, of course, if the program requires to be... Um, compiled like for say Java you need to compile yourself objective C you need to compile yourself some of these more advanced languages tend to require being compiled themselves first so then you would use a terminal so let me just pull something up here I have a little file it's just gonna return hello world don't worry about the syntax right now just we're just demonstrating something here so, you know, just going to print hello world. So, let's As you can see here, I've uh, already compiled it. So, it didn't return any errors as you can see. And I just ran the file after that and it ran hello world. Again, if you want to see it live, which I was doing before is So this is basically me saying compile the Java file. This is syntax again, so you need to know this keyword. It may uh, this runs on a terminal for I'm talking about terminal for Mac, but for Windows you would run uh, your files on the command prompt program. So again, I'm compiling the file here. Hit enter. There are no errors as you can see. Then. I simply run it by saying Java sample do something because that's the name of the file hit enter and here we go voila printed hello world it's pretty easy that's for languages that require to be compiled and since we're focusing our attention on Java we're going to be focusing our attention on compiling which is where IDEs come in IDEs stand for Integrated Development Environment. So an IDE would be something more advanced like this. Yeah, these two are worlds apart. You can see, like, there's a bunch of tools. It's definitely more powerful. You know, for Java, it's recommended you use Eclipse because it's a lot. it offers a lot more support for Java. For something like Objective-C, which is used to write apps for Apple, devices uh, you would use something called Xcode but I'm not gonna go into that right now just an example uh, yeah so you know instead of going through all the mumbo-jumbo here all I do here is hit play hello world BAM pretty cool also the nice thing is it kind of doesn't really compile but it kind of returns errors at the same time as you write so if I just put random jargon here it returns an error immediately and it does this on most cases so while this can be annoying sometimes in this case it's helpful because as a beginner you would want to know what you're doing wrong as you're writing it rather than trying to figure it out afterwards it's almost like someone sitting down with you and correcting your work for you as you do it like a peer editor pretty cool so IDEs are definitely recommended for Java. I recommend Eclipse. I use it myself. So, you know, those are some basics about programming. Next time we'll be beginning our studies of Java. So, you know, we're we're 
about to take the next step. So, you know, if you have any questions, do comment below and please subscribe to our channel. Uh, this was First Aid on Coding, provided to you by Cupertino High School Robotics. Thank you for watching.